my grand okay. auntie designed the Ghana flag. Wow. Um, my... That's huge. That's yeah. so, okay, wait, 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 wait. All right. Hello, friends. Welcome to season one of A Sound Conversation, a monthly podcast about life, music, and the business of both. I'm your host, Papa Bressa. And if you're enjoying the show, please leave a review on whichever platform you're enjoying this on. It goes a long way to help us reach others who will also enjoy it. And I still have a stutter or stammer. So if I start talking about my great, 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 great grandpa, I'm probably just talking about my great grandpa. All right. So I see this every show, but I mean it because I have the best guest. I am so excited to speak with today's guest. I've seen very few people generate as many dope ideas in one minute as our guest does when he's not consulting and creating with artists and brands he's creating beautiful insightful content on his youtube channel or making his own line of wallets and candles and clothes and more however he's most known for his video production he's produced or directed work for major artists like Wizkid, mr easy uh, stoneboy and, and even papa versa He's also responsible for the most watched music video in Ghana ever, which is Sakodia's Adonai featuring uh, Castro, RIP. He is a creative uh, polymath, skilled in fashion design, product design, filmmaking, music, business, and more things that I may not even know about. <laughs> Friends, help me welcome the one and only Nana Kofi Yesihene to the show. Nana, Akwaba. <laughs> How are you? How are you? How would you describe yourself? Um, well, I'm good. Um, we have life, so that means possibilities are endless. Yes. Um, describe myself. Like you said, I, I call myself a polymath. Yeah. Um, mainly because I grew up as an artist. I grew up in a family that promoted mm. art or that mm. didn't stand the art. Um, the Ghana flag was designed from someone in my family mm. and a few other things. So the art was seen as as a good career path. Yeah. So I grew up I grew up um having the freedom to experiment and try whatever I wanted to do. So I've dabbled in a lot of things. And yeah. I guess it was um now that I'm older <laughs> yeah. I sort of like buy into all the experience of everything I do to create solutions and to solve problems. So right. basically, that's that's who I am. Um, I solve problems using creative ideas or ideas that are backed by a lot of creativity. That's that's beautiful. So so throughout your life and career and all yeah. the the mediums that you've dabbled with and all the problems that you have solved, what are you so far the most proud of? Wow. <laughs> So, so, you know, you sent me notes about the questions before, and then I was thinking yeah. that, and I skipped it several times. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, know, I didn't know, I didn't know how I was going to answer that. But I, I, I would say that um, I try as much as possible to put my heart into everything I do. Mm. So I've gotten to a point where if my heart isn't in it, I may not necessarily touch it. Mm. So I would say that now everything I do is. It's a good work. Everything I do it has my heart, it has has my whole spirit behind it because I do it in my own. And mm-hmm. I've done some things in the past that I'm not necessarily proud of as a creative. Some of them I did because of the business side of, of it, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But I try as much as possible mm-hmm. to put my heart and spirit into everything I do. There may be a few things, of course. Um when when you do a piece of work and it begins to win awards, it begins right. to win awards and, and gain recognition. You tend to, to feel like you towards that as being your sure. favorite. But I mean, then again, there are things I've done that nobody has seen. I have seen things in my house that only I have seen that I love. So, mm. so I'll say every, every, every piece of art is, is special in its in its own way. Yeah. yeah. Let me just do that. Yeah. What's one of the things that you've done that you're not so proud of? Oh, um, hmm. 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 And I, I, I shot some music videos for some for some songs that I I did because of money, and I I, yeah. I worked setting clients that for my own set I knew that it wasn't going to go mm. anywhere, but because it was business I did it. Um, but I I feel like now I'm at a space where 
I've learned from all those things. So as much as I may not be proud of it, it has helped me shape who I am and where I am now. So, so yeah, I mean, maybe one day I'll I'll show you a few things. <laughs> maybe one day. I'm sure you won't name any names. No, I, I like your style. I like your style. Business, business, keep the business good. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Um, so, so I guess as a creative polymath, which medium are you most at home when yeah. creating with it? Um, I'd say is the within the past ten years, I have done a lot more motion picture, film, video. Okay. okay. So, so that. I am more at ease in that. that that's, that's more second nature. Like, yeah, right. I could put up a commercial in two days because now I have the structure to be able to put that up. My, my team, mm. and people around me, and um, yeah, so that I'm most comfortable in now. Prior to that, I was very comfortable with fashion because that was the stage I'm in, which I'm getting back into in like a month or two. Mm. So, I, I, I guess if I do it for a while, then I will feel comfortable. But I would say that for me, the primary thing is um, being in a space where I can create. That's the most comfortable I That's am. It. So if a, a project requires my creative input, I'm at home. And mm-hmm. um, there are times when projects will require my project management input or mm-hmm. my producing input or my overall management input. That's mm-hmm. also cool, yeah. But the more creative bias it is, Mm-hmm. The more at home I I am when a project is like that. That's great. I I know you hinted at it a little bit, but can you describe what that your favorite piece of art is that you said is in your house? <laughs> and hanging in my house. <laughs> hanging in your house and like can you, can you like like describe it for us and why it is your favorite? Okay, so um, so during lockdown, I decided that I hadn't painted in years. So just before. The president announced lockdown. I want to go where they get some food and all of that. I went to get food, did, and I get, I got some canvases, some mm. filling and stuff. Because mm. I knew I was going to be locked in for a while, and I needed to be yeah. at um, then, So I started painting, and with the aim of just just um, passing away the time. But in doing that, I, I discovered my love of painting because I, I I used to paint a lot. I discovered my love of painting. So let's just mm. say that. I have a few paintings hanging in my house. Um, that's that's sort of like exploring um, the experiences I've had through fashion, through photography, and how I've experienced Ghanaian art from right. a very lay point of view and from a very academic point of view. Kind of just paint imagery that sort of like brings my ideas or some of, of what I've, I've experienced. It may yeah. not necessarily make sense now for me even because one painting is different from the other. So maybe in like a year or two. I have a body of work to show to people and mm. I saw the and people these paintings to, mm. to, 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 to tell people. But I would say that most of the work I'm, I'm working on now, I hear those things that are meant to inspire people. And I mm. feel like that's the narrative that I am at home with because it's like I come from a place where I have to do everything by myself. I have to mm. like climb up by myself. You know, because right. I'm in a creative, a creative and a world surrounded by bankers and this is that you have to find yourself. And I feel like right. the best thing to do is put out content that will inspire other people who find themselves in that same space to, 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 to pick themselves up and, and still keep yeah. So I guess, I guess, yeah, that's the best thing to be about, just inspiring yeah. people um, yeah. with imagery. Yeah. Is that also what your YouTube channel is about? So my YouTube channel is just me um, talking about things of length in terms of lifestyle. So, so I, when I started my channel, I remember I did a few, a few videos about um, giving tips to creative people. But then right. I learned that creative people don't like to learn. I don't know how to do it. Those videos got like the, the least views. That's so, I, so I, 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 I tried to do more of lifestyle stuff. And, hmm. and that seems to appeal to people because I learned a lot, I learned a lot of hacks. I've learned a lot of hacks um, in, in, in my life and it's like good to share some of these things that people right. to like them so yeah once right. in a while I do a video it's very difficult to, to, to keep up and I say kudos uh, for the episode keep going because <laughs> it's difficult it's not easy it's not easy it's not easy yeah yeah but I try I try but it's fun it is fun uh, we've done some few outdoor camping stuff that that, that was really interesting so yeah bits and pieces of, of my life on uh, my YouTube 
Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah, switching gears real quick to the motion picture stuff and mm. specifically music videos. You've shot yeah. and done, I'm sure, hundreds at this point of music mm. videos. Can you walk us through your general system for creating a music video, just from how you you may come up with a concept to a treatment to the production to the editing just all of it as if you were speaking with a music artist or professional or video director mm. about how to think about that okay um so, so there are times when i mean usually the process will start with somebody somebody hits you up and gives you a song yeah and the certain songs that are so strong that the first chord you hear, it has an image in your head. Mm. Now, let's go back to image in your head. The reason why the image is in my head would be because I've opened myself up to other forms of art, sculpture, mm. dance, um, experimental film, um, painting, and all of that. So some way, somehow, when you hear the music, it may or may not strike a chord mm. or related to an image you see in your head if that yeah. happens so really, then you know that okay this, so that's it you're that's onto something big, yeah that's a big idea you need to break it down sometimes it doesn't really strike anything in the beginning because there are songs that you see that are so good that they spark millions of images in your head mm. but it gets you confused mm. you know so then you have to narrow down to one idea because you have like multiple ideas yeah. at the end of the day getting a big idea is the most important thing when you get a big idea then you break it down into um, the various aspects of what the music video will be. So, if the person is a known artist and you can take the risk of it, let me show you a thing. It's just mm. narrative or whatever sure. it is. If the person is a small artist and you need to show their face in your way. Right. And you look at the brand the person stands for and how you're going to portray the person. It's not every artist that you can have um, holding some girl. Some artists sure. don't. <laughs> it's right. not every artist that you can have staring in the camera. Some artists prefer you know, like their right side to their left side. Sure, think sure. The little, but they're all important to developing mm. your big idea. So usually when you develop your big idea, you break it down into what you need to make it happen. And at that time, that's when you talk to the artist. Um, at this point, you may have written a treatment, but maybe the treatment is, is your ideas on paper. So mm. somebody else can pick it up and be able to pick up in the sense what What's you want to do with that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, so at that point, then you go back to the artist. Now, the most important thing at this point is budget. Because sometimes you may think of a million dollar idea, but the person right. is not really just so that how then you, you execute this in a way right. that you can do with $400 or $600 right. or $3,000. Right. Exactly. Sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not. In the case where it's not, then you go back to the table and work out what your idea is going to be. Right. For me, I think the most important thing is having a good big idea. So that okay. even if you don't execute it to the, the hundred percent of its capacity or its capability and you execute eighty, people will right. still see that okay, this is the big idea. Right. You know. So after that, then then actual production starts. The creative mm -hmm. takes a a sideline and then the breaking down of the components you need. Um, with what thing for what, what camera you need, and all of that. Mm -hmm. The decision to use, for what camera to use, is also mm -hmm. both technical and creative because sometimes you want to film in small spaces, so you can afford to have like a, a red on every rig. You probably need a GoPro in one corner, mm -hmm. but then for mm -hmm. other shots, it's also what you want, and probably a certain color for you want, you choose an RE over a red. Mm -hmm. These are all creative decisions that are, that are supported with technical reasons, but most of all, and they come to life because of financial um, sure. reasons. Then you have to create a balance there. And then obviously you jump into production. And for me as a director, I feel the most important step or the most important day in, in the music video life is the day you're filming. Because that's when you take all your decisions. That's when you implement all your decisions. That's when things that would go wrong yeah. will go wrong. Yeah, And that's when you have to think on your feet and solve problems etc. I would also say that usually when you start it's like a one man band, you do a lot of things yourself. But as you become bigger, it's our advice that you get people who do other things. Like yeah, DOP, you get like an FSH, you get a producer, you get a mm. colorist, you get 
when you start working with people, you all of a sudden realize there's a certain way to take and talk to you as a director. Hmm. And it gives you room to play. It's back to the thing I said in the beginning. Right. And um, where I said, when, when there's a project that I, ha- I have room to create more over the other things, I feel more at home. And I feel yeah. that's what every director should actually do, yeah. So, so that, if you're able to get people to help you do your music, you do voila, that's great. Then you go into post production, that's when you determine how you talk and type it and all of that. Right. That, that, that creative thing, and you color your music video, and then you deliver to your client. If your client loves it, cool way. If they don't, it goes to another process of going back and forth. Keep it moving, and yeah. so, the vi- so the video is done, and, and then you put it out. Now, what I also add is, as a director, it would be great to give your clients um, things like trailers, things like little snippets, because now people activate all sorts of content on various platforms. Right. So it's a good thing for you to do. Even a director's commentary in a music video is also a right. good piece of content that, that right. the artist can use, that you, the director, can also show up your, your abilities or your thinking, you know? Right. So it doesn't just end up giving it to the, the artist. The other piece can also do good content right. skin. You may as well just maximize right. it. So, right. so that, that's like the process. I mean, it sounds simple, but sometimes it's all back and forth. It's a lot. Yeah. But yeah, basically that's it. <laughs> I love it. Do you, do you think that the music video is the defining piece of content in a musician's like catalog? I'll say the most defining piece of content in a musician's catalog is the music. Okay. Because we are in an era where people are drawn to videos. Right. So the best way is for the artists to showcase their music through nah. videos. Now, not necessarily music videos. Mm-hmm. It can be a film with the music in the background. Mm-hmm. It can be a dance. I mean, you mm-hmm. can see a lot of people are facing their songs on TikTok right now. Right, right. Yeah. So you should, you're just combining your main assets with the music and video. Mm-hmm. But then you determine whether you're going the music video route or you right. determine whether you're going this route or that. And even with the music video route, there are several styles you can... So many, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I think it is any time that we have the freedom to experiment is now. Mm. You know, the time to try all sorts of things, inverted videos, videos that go back right. to, you right, know, right. videos that are rearranged. It's time to try all these things because now the world has a very open mindset to accept a lot of these ideas. Yeah. yeah. Of all the mediums or media, I guess, that you dabble in, what's one that you wish you were really, really good at that you don't feel like you are? Because hmm. like me, like me, I wish... I wish I were a visual artist. Every day I'm like, man, I, if I could, could paint and see... like. That's where I would like to be. This music thing is nice, you know, but but it feels yeah. a little bit like I'm thankful for the gift and everything, but it feels like to really connect with a lot of people, music is dope, but like you said, we're in this very yeah. video, you know, age. So anyway, like 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 do you have that <laughs> in your um, world? I, okay, so so of, of the things I double in now, I wish I could I wish I could draw better. Really? Because because I, I didn't draw for a while, so so my drawing skills are doing this. So I wish I could draw mm. better. But if I'm to move slightly out of the things I double in, I wish I could play the bass better because I have a bass line here. Yeah. Mm. So so maybe you can just pause. we can just trade. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll just trade. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I wish I, I could I could say so because. Because um, I grew up in the 80s, I was born in the 80s, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. a lot of that music had a lot of bass melodies and stuff like that. Right. I grew up, and I'm, and I'm African, so obviously bass has a way of getting to you. Yeah. So I, 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 I fell in love with the bass a long time ago. I got one a few yeah. years ago, and I haven't had time to practice. So yeah. that I wish I could have time to practice and be good at. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Maybe I'll give some some yeah. lessons every now and then. <laughs> 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 that's great um so so i guess like you you mentioned that you grew up in a family of artists and and, and yeah. all so i guess like more specifically who are like who artistically inspired 
you growing up and then who is inspiring you like now. right now and today yeah okay so like i said um my 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 grandma my great grandmother no my grandmother sorry so okay. like my grandfather's sister my grand okay. auntie designed the god of black wow um, my... that's huge that's yeah. so okay, wait, wait 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 so you're saying <laughs> that in your family you have somebody who designed the national yeah. symbol, the thing that yes. people yeah. okay, cool, no yeah. big deal. Go on, <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> casually just mentioned, yeah, like casually, that. yeah, no big deal. Go on, carry yeah. on. <laughs> and my 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 uncle, as that's my grandfather's brother again, um, was a professor in art, professor in my novel, hmm. and that's the question in the story. So there's been art in the family that's on my father's side, on my mother's hmm. side. My uncle is a filmmaker and one of the best filmmakers to ever shoot on celluloid in Ghana back in the 90s. Um, my uncle is a designer, C. Michael, he's a menswear designer, um, based in Norway, Japan, um, and London. Um, and he, he's also an inspiration to me. So I'd say that was in the family. So that inspiration was outside yeah. of that inspiration when I was growing up. Now, I'd say my inspiration is. It's everything, everybody, anyone who's doing something amazing. Because there have been times when that was just like a week where I study the work of the Virgil Abloh so much. There's another week where I'm I'm reading so much about Kanye West and how he creates and his, mm. his thoughts. Mm. Another time, I'm probably obsessed with um, um, a classical pianist and his his um, productivity mm. um, and system. And then another time, I'll probably be listening to a, a local band like Sancho C because, mm, because yeah. all of a sudden, I, I want to understand what they're doing. You know, mm. yesterday yesterday in the morning, I woke up and it was Fela all morning mm. because I nice. felt like I had to listen to Fela. So I'll say that for me, I open myself up. I feel like I'm, I'm a sponge and I mm. try and get ideas from from everywhere. Somebody somebody told me once that the best way to get ideas in a medium is to take it from another medium. And yes. True. So if I'm able to pick an idea from, say, um, something from the culinary art and bring it into music, mm. it won't look like music. It won't look mm. like that, but it's a new idea. And that's how I keep myself going and keep myself inspired. So Interesting. Because, so, yeah, listen to your music would inspire me to do something mm. for a painting. So, of course, mm. I try and keep that very, very open so mm. things stay fresh. Interesting. So I guess what's what's an example of the biggest idea that you've learned from one medium that has been very effective in another one that that okay. you enjoy. So so I, I give an example. Um, I shot a video for for Adam speaking from okay. the Tower, mm-hmm. and when he sent me the song, it was one of those songs that nothing came to mind. I was mm-hmm. flat, and I remember. The other day, I was sitting in the car, I was talking to a friend, and the person just happened to mention a scripture. Um, and the person was reciting the scripture line by line by line, and I stopped. So I opened the scripture, and there, there was my treatment. My treatment was written really? by God in the scripture. That's like crazy. I could see the images, and I, I literally just picked the scripture, wrote the scripture to the scripture. Figure out how I was going to portray that in a local setting, and that was the video. Hmm. You know, so, hmm. so if I don't tell you that, way, I don't break it down, you probably right. not to understand. So that's that's one idea of how something yeah. moves from one field to the other. So yeah, it happens. It happens lots of times in my work. But... Interesting. Yeah, I think with me, I there was one idea that I definitely picked up when I was studying some like like minimalist you know, art. Mm-hmm. And the idea was to to uh, like get to a point where on your piece of art that there's nothing left to take away. Yeah. That idea was huge, and I and and I would I I don't think I would have learned that in music. I mean, I've had the instinct, but it just really like made it so super clear. And that's how yeah. I've approached my music. Cause cause me like when I'm like making a song i'm just adding stuff adding stuff all the time and i'm like okay wait 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 there's there's a, there's a whole lot going on in here so yeah. now I'll take away take away until there's nothing you know that is um yeah nothing that you left to to, to 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 remove and that's yeah. that's you know it's it's great 
I'll give you an example. So, so yeah. um, Kanye West, Sunday Service Choir, the, the, their sound is void of, of electronics, the electronic mm-hmm. sound. Right. And, and that, is, that is reminiscent of choral music. Mm-hmm. And so, so there was a time I was listening to it, and I, and I remember going to church as a kid and listening to the choir sing. Mm-hmm. Initially, it was a huge church, and down there was the choir singing, and we sit at the back, and you could still hear them, you know? And the yeah. day I was thinking about that, it just, it just brought to mind how, how music has become so layered that sometimes mm-hmm. it doesn't require all that. It just gives right. it to the barest minimum. Right. what it is and that's what actually yeah. yeah yeah that's that's dope so you've done a lot uh and you are still doing a lot and you will still do I a just lot started. <laughs> you just started i love that but so I, at this stage of your life and yeah. career um what 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 is your biggest aspiration like when you say you're just getting started like where are you trying to go next yeah I, I think it's intertwined because okay. but, um, certain things have happened in my life in the past 15, 10, 15 years okay. that's who I am. And, okay. and about two years ago, I got to the point where I realized that, okay, there are things that have shaped my life that have brought negative things into my life and the things that have brought positive things into my life. Hmm. But these negative things have positive sides. So then, yeah. okay, this negative thing happened, but if I need to spin it positively, what does it mean? Mm. Then I got to a point and I realized that at this stage in my life, I just need to live. And living means I need to live according to my purpose. And obviously my purpose is what comes naturally to me. When I wake up in the morning, what strength within my heart to do? Yeah. What is that thing that at the back of my mind that when you wake me up, I would easily do? And that's right. my purpose. And that's mm. all I want to do. And mm-hmm. from my understanding now, unless God changes in the next six months or one year, is to be the creative that I am, create, solve problems, make people mm-hmm. happy, and, and, and get everything out of my mm-hmm. head and my heart to the world. So then fashion, film, photography, yeah. everything, as long as it would create um, a story for someone to listen to, someone to create change, to create, to inspire somebody, to edify somebody, Right. I'm for it. And make right. money while I have to so I can <laughs> Sure. When you give value, the money will follow. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's why I'm in my life right now. That's great. Are you at all mindful of legacy? And if so, how exactly would you like to be remembered? Hmm. Two things. I, I would for me. And people don't like to talk about death, but obviously we're all going to pass on one day. We will. Want, Surprise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to be able to leave empty. For me, that's mm-hmm. the most important thing. To be able to leave empty knowing that I did everything mm-hmm. or almost everything. And in doing everything, I hope and I pray that everything I do stays and lives on to do what I can't do forever. Mm-hmm. So to uplift people, to people, to teach people, yeah. to edify people, to, to cause people to become better. Right. For me, that's my life mission right now. I love it. I love it. That's great. So we are going to transition into our next uh, segment yeah. called Overrated, Underrated. <laughs> but I want to give a quick shout out to my favorite fashion brand, Dianu. Dianu, which I'm actually wearing right now, is a black-owned uh, clothing line with super fly and modern African-inspired fashion based in the U.S. and they ship worldwide. So visit nice. Dianu.com, D-I-Y-A-N-U, and thank me later. And guess what? You can get 15% off any purchase when you enter the discount Versa15, V-E-R-S-A-1-5, during checkout. So you're welcome. All woo-hoo. right. So, woo-hoo. all right. So... Overrated, underrated. Nana, I'm going to give you a word or a phrase and you can mm-hmm. simply respond with either overrated or underrated. And you're okay. also free to elaborate as much as you want, but no pressure. No pressure. Okay. okay? No All right. Pressure. Number one, morning routines. Underrated. Underrated. 
I think they're very, very important. I mean, every okay. day, the morning you see, it, it, sets, it sets a tone for your day. And you just can't start your day just anyhow. Yeah. I mean, it's very important. What's yours like? Um, wake up, um, lay my bed. I feel like that's the first practice for me during mm. the day. Lay my bed and either make coffee and jump into the bathroom or bathroom, make coffee. Um, look at pull up my app. I look at what I wrote the night before about how my day is going to be like, mm. and sit down, settle down, read, and then start my day. That that that's how it's supposed to be. There are days when it is quite chaotic. Wake up, wear something in the house. So yeah, yeah. But ideally, that's my morning. Okay, love it. Afro beats. Underrated. <laughs> I, I, I think so. Yesterday, I was listening to, to some Latin music, mm-hmm. and 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 then after that, I played some Afrobeat, and I was like, "Wow, every, every form of music can thrive in mm-hmm. Afrobeat mm-hmm. because Afrobeat Afrobeat is like music of the world." Yeah, it's you the know, new hip hop. Yeah, it's, it's a new it's a new soul. Yeah, new Arab. Yep. Yep. It's R and B and soul and hip hop and everything yep. together. It's yep. it's it's amazing. I think it's just amazing. I love it. I love it. All right, next word. Next word is camping. Oh <laughs> camping is is underrated, I'll tell you why. Okay, tell so, me why. Because me now I mean I think it's overrated, but let's go. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people um Think oh camping all oh, the discomfort this and that. that. The, my first camping trip taught me a lot of lessons. Well, maybe mm-hmm. I'm the kind of person that tries to learn something from everything. But I remember stepping back into my apartment and I said, "Why do I have to leave?" Mm-hmm. You know, because because I'm on the mountain. I had one bottle of water. I had three clothes. I had to recycle. I had a tent that I had to pack every morning. You know, and everything was modular and everything was small. Mm-hmm. Plus. There was freedom, there was fresh air, and I had time to sit. Mm. I would suggest that everyone camps out in the outdoors mm. twice a year. Get it more. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it could be you. <laughs> we are born. We are born. <laughs> Look, my thing with camping is very similar to Trevor Noah's bit on, on it, right? And I and, and it's interesting that we had you know the, the same bit, but whatever. Um, the arc of civilization has been bending towards this, okay? And now you won't, you're telling me I should go back and reverse that and go outside. No, I'm, I'm okay. You, but anyway, that's it's not my it's not my my time. It's your time. We'll, so. have, we'll have this conversation <laughs> after your first trip. <laughs> <laughs> see, so see, I, I've been no, oh, I've been. That's what I'm telling you. It's from experience. I've been. I'm like, well, I'm it's overrated. It's overrated. It's overrated. <laughs> I've been in Ghana and the US. Overrated. Anyway. Well, Enough oh, of that. Wow. <laughs> um, so next word, actually, that's a good, good a segue to next word, which is minimalism. Mm. Mm. I, I think minimalism, when overdone, is overrated. When okay. done properly, good. because okay. because um, there's another word called essentialism, mm, mm-hmm. which I think. Is what is what should be what we should be talking about more because minimalism is purely aesthetic where less stuff, less stuff, less. Right. Stuff. What do we need the stuff? Because right. sometimes yeah, the happiness is tied to these things, like the focus mm-hmm. of the family and all of that. You know, and I had a minimalist say that you can be minimal, but then you have one thing that you can splurge on. Mm-hmm. Then what's the point? Mm-hmm. But essentialism talks about keeping things that are essential in your life. Mm-hmm. And letting go of the things that are not essential, things that you can mm-hmm. live without. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think mm-hmm. that is the word that should be thrown about. That's it. So minim- minimalism can be stark and boring sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're saying mostly overrated. Um, let's just track it down the middle. And write essentialism across. <laughs> okay. All right. Essentialism. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We've heard. Okay. Last word. Are you ready? 
Nana is he here? Ah, I I I think this is the problem. I mean, my natural instinct would say I'm the waiter, but um. It's good to be. It's, it's good to know that you're underrated. But most importantly, um, you need to prove why you are underrated. Yeah. So as I open my mouth now and I say, "Yeah, I'm underrated," I need to prove the world why and and put out stuff and do things to affect this world that people would mm. in ten years say that yeah, he said he's underrated and yes, he is right. So for mm. me, I'll say that so I can I can use it as a reminder to. To be a greater person, it gives you that edge, gives you that that reason yep. to cool. <laughs> not be complacent. All right, all right, yeah. I love it, I love it, Nana. That's about it, honestly. Um, I have way more questions, but I think that will be a mm. whole other episode. So we'll come back to that. We've opened up the kind of worms, and we will dive in again on a future episode. But for this episode, Nana, do you have any last words that you want to share very directly with the audience? Not me, but yeah. the audience. Anything to promo, a word of gratitude, how they can find you. This is your time. Yeah. yeah so, so the first thing I say is, um, I've been reading about fear recently. Fear. And okay. I, yeah, and I think that a lot of us um, are not able to reach our potential because of fear. Hmm. Then again, what is fear? It's just something that lives in your head, and I think it's kind of something in your head that. It's over your head. It's over your emotion. It's over your life, and it stops you from doing things. But then the the, the the thing is, if you were not there, what would you do? And that's exactly mm-hmm. where you start doing. Because that's where your purpose lies. That's where your people. Um. In the next in the next few months, I'm I'm launching a, a clothing label, um, mostly for men, but some stuff for women. Um, mm-hmm. under my lifestyle brand, I am. And that was taking my time this this past one month. I hope that okay. it's it's a it's a re-entry into fashion, and I hope that it it would it would become a, it would become great. Um, yeah. Where to find me? I'm I'm on I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I find me people uh, open to talk to anybody, open to advise anybody, open to collaborate yeah. with anybody, open to work. Yeah. Um, and essentially create. I mean, the thing for me right now is. Create a world that we can all be proud of. Proud. Yo, we're 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 messing too many things up. So I mean, if you have yeah. a chance to do something to make the world better, mm. so, why yeah. not? That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you, Esihene. It's Thank been an you, honor too. to Thank have you, you on this show. Highly honored. Thank you so much. Um, and to our listeners, I have been your host, Papa Bressa, and we've had Nana Esihene. Uh, thank you yes you listening right now for your time and support make sure yeah, you're following you. me on all socials p-a-a-p-a-v-e-r-s-a papa versa and don't forget to subscribe to this podcast new episodes are coming every month till next time take care of yourself and your loved ones grace and peace to you